Hello, so I'm Michael Behrens and we're here for another another virtual tour of the Knoll Bunny Run Wildlife Preserve. It's July 12th, 2020, and it's hot here in Central Texas. We are in full-blown summer. We're, get, we're, we're uh, experiencing triple-digit weather, and so it's more important uh, now uh, to, when you get outside, get outside early in the morning because it's still uh, it's still com it's more comfortable than you'd think to get out early, and there's still lots of wildlife to observe. Uh, in the bird world, uh, this time of year, birds are still nesting. Some birds are still nesting, but many birds have already raised a brood and have juveniles chasing their parents around, still getting fed, and then still other birds are completely done with their reproduction for the year and have even started to wander a little bit outside their normal range so this can be an interesting time of year if you can brave the heat to get out and uh, see what what birds you might find a little out of range and even some groups of birds uh, the shorebirds which we're probably not going to see today some of the shorebirds have actually started migrating south already so uh, we're going to make a circuit of the preserve this morning and um, in the, in the d different habitat types and, and see what we can find. Mature male painted buntings right beside each other. I'm kind of confused by this because usually the mature males keep their distance away from each other because they're on territory. This might be because breeding season is kind of coming to an end. Maybe these two males are no longer defending their territory. to each other outside of uh, spring or fall migration and one of them was, was definitely singing we hear the music jumbled musical notes that was him behind me and there goes one of the birds and there goes the other So we're, we're hearing and seeing a male summer tanager, which is perched way up there at the top of a bare, um, partially dead tree against the sky. It's all red. And I, I call this bird the other red bird in Central Texas. The red bird we're all familiar with is the Northern Cardinal, which is here all year long, but the summer tanager is just here uh, in the summer, as its name implies. It's a uh, summer resident. They come here to nest and breed. And it has that uh, sort of, I don't know, I just heard a downy woodpecker whinny in the background. But mostly what we're hearing is this musical song of the summer tanager. It's sort of a lower, lower tones are similar to a human whistle. And there was a downy woodpecker again, whinnying. So here's the natural spring, one of, one of the natural springs on Nall Bunny Run, the, the largest one. It has this uh, lid built over it uh, that was part of an Eagle Scout, Boy Scout project and it has a cement uh, box built around it, probably in the 40s or 50s to keep it flowing and open. And every month we check on it uh, and see what we might find. There are often frogs, maybe a crayfish. Let's see what we find this month. I see some cave crickets on the far wall. And you can see there's a little bit of stuff on the surface of the water, but it's really, it's really clear clean water. So Carolyn and Sarah spotted this orange dragonfly, which is perched on the tip of last year's frostweed. You see there's a frostweed plant, new, the newly growing this year's frostweed plant, and then right in the middle of it, the dead stalk 
of last year's. There's this really neat big orange dragonfly perched right at the top. And this dragonfly is a neon skimmer. And the, uh, the species is neon skimmer and it's a female neon skimmer. And I can tell that by the shape of the abdomen. The end of the abdomen has these sort of tab shaped uh, appendages on either, end, on either side of the very end that the females have. And by the overall color, the males turn just a bright neon red as the name suggests and the females are this lighter orange color. And this is one of our larger dragonfly species. Um, and that's one of the neat things about uh, summer in central Texas is we get we have a huge variety of, of dragonflies and damselflies that become common. And this dragonfly, all dragonflies are predators. They eat, uh, they catch other insects out of the air. And you can kind of divide them up into two kinds. There are perchers and flyers. And the perchers hunt from a perch, like flycatchers in the bird world, and the flyers hunt on the wing, like swifts and swallows in the bird world. You can probably guess that this one is a percher because it is just happy to be perched right by me. It's aware of me, but uh, she doesn't seem to mind me so far. And she's looking around, just watching for flying insects to to take off and grab. And uh, the uh, the perchers are much uh, are much easier to observe and photograph. Oh, there she goes. Right, she's coming right back to the same spot, <laughs> just like a, a flycatcher that uh, has a favorite perch and uh, go, goes on forays from that perch and comes back to the same one. There's a lot of this American germander and you see this orange bug flying away from us is some kind of wasp. And it's real common when you're in an area with a lot of flowering plants that you'll see bees pollinating the flowers, but you also see wasps buzzing around. And wasps are pollinators too. Uh, wasps use, a lot of wasps have evolved to um, to capture other insects and spiders and paralyze them and take them back to feed their eggs and their young. But as adults, the adult wasps feed on pollen and nectar. So uh, a lot of people don't realize that wasps are valuable pollinators, just like our bees and flies. Earlier, we spotted one of the larger dragonflies and we just spotted the very smallest dragonfly. The larger one was the neon skimmer. The small one is an eastern amber wing. And you, if you can see the amber color, this tiny little dragonfly, it's like an inch, inch and a half long. And it's perched on the end of a twig here. Oh, there it's moving around a little bit. It has a similar lifestyle to the neon skimmer. It likes perching, hunting other, it hunts even smaller, tiny insects from a perch. And they're really, really exquisite little dragonflies, and a lot of people don't realize that uh, that they get the small. So we're in the riparian corridor habitat type now, and as you can see, it's really amazing. We got all these tall bald cypress trees lining right up, right at the water's edge. They like that uh, transition zone uh, right at the edge of the water, and. Uh, you can see cypress trees are coniferous, they're covered in needles, like a pine tree, and you can smell them. We can't transfer the smell with these videos, but I wish we could. And, uh, and we're right next to the riparian uh, habitat, uh, is right next to the sandy prairie. And let's uh, experience another transition as we walk out of the riparian corridor back into the open sky of the sandy prairie back into the croton vegetation here's another here's another remnant cottonwood tree out a little bit 
back from the edge of the lake and then looking back you can see the line of cypress trees and then as you get lower you can see the switchgrass growing below the cypress trees another really neat juxtaposition of habitat types on the Nall Bunny Run. So at the top of the mesquite tree, now on the left edge, there's a kind of a largest bird moving around. It's a western kingbird, and it's kind of backlit right now. Can't see much more than a silhouette, but they're in the flycatcher family. And there it goes. It just flew to the right. Now it's behind the tree, but the... Oh, and that was a woodpecker that we just heard. A red-bellied woodpecker. And I just heard a blue-gray gnatcatcher. So all of a sudden, we started recording for the Western Kingbird, but there's four, three or four or five different kinds of birds around here. Carolina Wren is singing, a summer tanager is singing. We come up the hill a little bit. There's an Eastern Phoebe perched on a low shrub just beyond the orange lantana flowers. And then just flew across the gap from this tree, from the mesquite tree to the cedar elm was a little blue-gray gnat catcher. I'm hearing a Carolina wren and a summer tanager singing again. Even mid-morning on a Central Texas summer, there's still birds active out, out and about that you can see and enjoy. So we saw two large birds flying through the deciduous woods here that are, uh, I think they were juvenile great horned owls, and I see one, and it's perched up about 20 feet on the side of one of the tree trunks. Let me see if I can get a picture of it. Oh, I see it. Yeah, great horned, a juvenile great horned owl is looking at me right now. Looking at us. And the juvenile birds haven't figured out to be as wary as the adults. And sometimes you can, you can see them more often than the adults. Great horned owls are really cool. They're a real common, huge owl species, and they're so common because they're so adaptable. And we can find them in a nature preserve like this, but you can even find them in urban and suburban neighborhoods, probably even downtown Austin. There are great horned owls. Let's see if we can get a little closer. See it's turning its head back and forth, sometimes looking at us and sometimes looking the other direction. I wonder, I bet its sibling is nearby. And it's tolerant. Oop, there he goes. We've ended another virtual tour of the Nall Bunny Run. Some highlights were right off the bat finding two male painted buntings, one of them singing together in close proximity. A little bit of a mystery why they were together. Uh, maybe uh, this is the time of territoriality has passed already and they were comfortable, two male painted buntings being together. We also got to experience really neat habitat transitions from one habitat type to another. The dense oak juniper woods into the sandy prairie, the uh, the riparian corridor back into the sandy prairie and then entering the deciduous woods and coming out of the deciduous woods into the Cedar Elm Parkland. Really a neat uh, sampling of all the different habitat types on this little 40 acre preserve. It's one of the things that makes it really special. We got to see the spring again. We got to see uh, 
Dragonflies are, are emerging again and becoming more uh, numerous as the summer progresses and we got a really close look at a neat female neon skimmer. And in the deciduous woods area, we were super lucky to encounter two juvenile great horned owls and get a little bit of video footage of one of them and I've got some photographs too. Um, there are lots of pollinators that are coming out. We got to see bees, flies, wasps. Uh, there were hummingbirds out. And um, we ended up back here at the gate. We saw the, uh, uh, the, the blackjack oak, a tree on the edge of its range. And hope this uh, demonstrates that uh, it's still worth getting out outside even in the central Texas summer. Uh, beat the heat early in the morning. There's still lots of neat stuff going on to see. And uh, this was uh, another virtual tour of, the, of Hill Country Conservancy's Nall Bunny Run. Uh, Hill Country Conservancy is a great local land trust. Uh, if you're looking for good local conservation causes to support, uh, HCC is one of them.